Okay, welcome back, or welcome, if this is your first class. And by the way, there will be an attendance sheet to sign at the end. If you registered for the class after Monday night at around nine, which is when I updated the attendance, then your name might not be there, in which case you simply add it at the end, and I'll catch you the next time between now and Friday, I will see the names in solar again. If you are not here on Monday, keep in mind that we are not on Blackboard. The class website, what you see on the screen, can be found by typing my name, andreafedi.com is my personal domain, slash CCS395, the name of the class, and you'll be redirected to the website of the class, which resides on the servers of Notion, because everything you see has been realized using this app, Notion, which will be one of the digital apps, knowledge-based apps, that will be discussed and also tested during the class. On Monday, we talked about the class website and the syllabus. There were any questions at the end, but I would like to ask you if you had a chance to review the syllabus or think about the various assignments or policies. If you have any questions now, I will put the section you want to discuss on the screen and I will clarify, explain, try to answer your questions. After this brief Q&A about the syllabus, we will get into the discussion, which is also the basis or shares the focus with the first written assignment called My Digital Life. I will put on the screen some instructions. I will ask you to write a few notes and then share some of your observations with the rest of the class. Finally, during the last part of today's class, I will initiate the demonstration of the Notion app, which will be practiced on Friday. So on Friday, keep in mind that we will do some work in the class. And as I said on Monday, if you are comfortable with working from your phone, a phone, a smartphone is all you need in order to do these Friday tests, Friday digital labs, if you will because a browser is all you need to operate these apps, although you can also install the app version if, you, if you'd rather use that. If you want, of course, you can bring the computer in class, okay? Um, just a quick announcement, something you do find in the announcements page. I posted there the announcement for an event on campus about climate change because as I said in class I work with a program in globalization studies so this is one of the events that we uh, organized under the aegis of the Institute for Globalization Studies. I also posted an announcement about Monday's class and the recording. I wasn't able to provide a video recording because I wasn't familiar with the system in this classroom I didn't set up the camera correctly, so the camera was pointed at the podium where I never spent a minute on Monday and there was no audio because I thought they, they would have some kind of system in the room. In fact, one has to borrow a microphone from audiovisual and uh, of course I had a digital recording from my phone, but there was no point in trying to synchronize uh, an empty corner of the room with my voice. So for Monday's class, if you missed it, you will only find an audio recording, an MP3 file, which can be played from inside the uh, screen, or you can download it and play it on some other device or some other app. You will also find uh, pictures of the board with all the drawings and the notes that I put on the board, okay? 
So once again, if there are any questions about the class in general, the organization of the class, the great components, the syllabus and its policies, I'll be happy to elaborate, clarify, explain. So the floor is yours for questions. Any questions, of course. Okay, let me just point out the most important co part of this is of course the various great components with some explanation but if you want to know more you can email me there is a link to another page that I want to emphasize and of course we'll go back to it and go through this short page and expand the knowledge that you find in the notes of the page but from the beginning I would recommend that you open this page to learn more about your final project that has to do with the notion of a wiki course I have a picture of Wikipedia on top because that's the most famous most successful wiki We call a wiki, a wiki any app that is focusing on the collection, the analysis, the organization, the retrieval of knowledge and the production of new knowledge. This term was introduced during the 1990s. However, it fell out of fashion during the last 10 years. So some apps still refer to the term wiki. Notion is one of them, others, such as Evernote, do not, even though Evernote is also essentially a wiki. And in order to define something a wiki, we expect to find the following, that there is a focus on the production and the development, the revision, the expansion of the content, which means that you need to be able to add content rapidly and in a form that allows for the sharing of the content in a quick, efficient uh, way. So you want to find quick and easy editing from any kind of device, from the phone to the computer. And just typing is sufficient to put something out on the web. As opposite to, as in, in contrast to what would happen with HTML and CSS, with downloading files, opening in an editor, uploading files. As you will see, these apps allow you to just type something on the screen and that immediately is transferred onto a server and then communicated to anyone who has access to the page. Even when you type a link, no coding is necessary. The moment you type, touch the space bar, or press enter. After you type a link, the link becomes clickable. No code at all. Not that HTML makes it so difficult to codify, to program a clickable link. But in this case, nothing is easier than typing www.google.com and then continue typing, and what you type there becomes clickable why this emphasis on easy links because links are key to the organization of knowledge in fact the most rudimentary elementary form of link could be found in dictionaries and more importantly 
in Encyclopedia, especially the French Encyclopédie, which is one of the masterpieces of the French Enlightenment, where you constantly find calls to other articles. Of course, it's not something that you can do automatically, you have to flip the pages, but there are constant references to other articles that populate their entries pretty much the same way that Wikipedia works, right? Populating articles with links is what made Wikipedia successful, not the contents, not the quality of the contents. So the emphasis is placed on content and not on design or style, not on the aesthetics. And a wiki is different from a database because it's open-ended, because it is less structured, and therefore needs to be flexible because the moment you start collecting data, you don't know where this will take you. It's not like creating a database of traffic on Long Island where you know that you'll want to uh, put there in your database the cars, the number of cars that take the Long Island Expressway, or the number of tickets, the number of accidents on that highway, okay? No, here we're talking about something that approaches a totality of data. So big data or something similar in principle needs to be dynamic. I need to be able to reorganize the content quickly when I know more about the project, when I learn more about what I can do with the data. So I need to be able to rearrange the content, to merge it, which is a process that is called transclusion, that is a technical term. I need to be able to break down the content, to filter it with a search, or to create internal connections with links and tags. Of course, a wiki works best when it's nimble, meaning that you don't want to have pages that are very long and require a lot of scrolling, a, long of, a lot of page downs before you find the content. I want to be able to input a search and then find what I'm looking for within a screen or two so that I wouldn't have to travel much with my eyes. And it's agile. There is a, a rigid structure, which is also true of Wikipedia to a degree, but I can reorganize everything or navigate everything in different ways by using links or by using tags. See here, Notion is one of the companies, and it's a multi-billion dollar company at this point that is gaining traction in the corporate world. One of the few companies today that still retains the use of the term wiki, even though essentially many other similar apps can be classified as such. One of the essential aspects of a wiki is the ability to share information and to collaborate on a project. So you can share something right away. You can collaborate asynchronously on a project. Users can have access to different kinds of content and they, have <coughs> they may have different kinds of privileges, just viewing a content or editing a content, etc. And another way to call these apps, a term that has replaced the usage of the term wiki, is the label of second mind or second brain. So what used to be called wiki software is now often called second brain apps or second mind app, apps that extend the potentiality of your mind. That is the term that you will find in blogs in YouTube channels on productivity, for example. And I've introduced some notes to explain what we mean by second brain 
added also the term that I used on Monday, epistemic engine, something that facilitates the production of knowledge, the collection and the retrieval of knowledge. But as I said, we will re-examine these concepts. So right now I'll go back to the lectures and readings page. And as I said, at the end of this week, I've added a new page where you will find the digital recording of the class and images of what we discussed on Monday. And this is the focus of our discussion. Again, we'll do this in two ways. During the first few minutes, I'll, I will give you time to think about the topics of the discussion. And as I said, the, whatever you think today can become the notes on which to base your assignment with the same title, which will be due in a couple of weeks. So I will ask you to write down your initial reflections and notes wherever you want on your computer and before the end of the class if you can please email them to me to andrea.fedi and the spelling of my name is over there at stonybrook.edu okay this way i'll see what you wrote what you thought of today if you don't have a chance and not anyone will have not everyone will have a chance to participate in the discussion, but you will also have a copy of those notes that you can reuse and expand for the digital assignment, which is between 300 and 500 words long, okay? So these are the points that you want to develop. Of course, today we don't have a lot of time, so it's fine if you skip some of these points. So pick whatever you find more interesting now, although when it comes to the assignment, I expect to find pretty much all, the, all, all of the points developed in some way, in some fashion. Again, between three and 500 words, it doesn't mean that you can extensively discuss or provide a comprehensive review of all the apps, the programs you use, etc. but try to uh, include more points in your assignment. So the first point is, what are your favorite apps or software programs? Which can be just a list, okay? Especially now at this point. B is slightly different. What are your most frequently used apps or software programs? Maybe there are apps that you're forced to use because of the university work you're doing in your specific field. You may not love them at all. You may despise them or hate them. For example, I hate Blackboard. I hate solar. I don't know about you, but the interface is ugly. Solar, the 1990s called, they want their interface back. And Blackboard, yes, can be done nicely, but it's click, 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 publish. Whereas in my apps, such as Notion is type, and I don't publish, it's already published. The moment I type, half a second, gets on the server, and it's there. So I don't want to deal with a cumbersome software such as Blackboard, powerful, but very corporate-like. You need training. You need a lot of training. So most loved, most used. What apps or software programs do you use specifically? And now in here, you might have gaps, right? You might not use apps at all for some of these functions. That's fine. You can just declare so in the assignment for now, you can just skip it. Let me bring it down. So I provided a range of options, but as I said, you might not rely on digital tools for one or several of these areas. So what do you use to track your classes, appointments, deadline? Do you use some kind of electronic calendar 
or agenda? And if so, which one and how you use it? What do you use to collect notes for the assignments? Not notes in class. May be different for some. But when you start a project such as a paper, where do you collect articles, content, references, and where do you write that? If you use a different software, what do you use to write and collect, archive your class notes? But extending that to your personal life, do you do anything of the sort for personal notes? Do you have a digital journal? And if so, which app or software do you use? Do you write down reflections about your life? Or do you have some kind of journal that you keep for yourself? Finally, again, you might not have anything to say here, but some people use apps to collect receipts and other important documents, tax documents, etc., or to collect and retrieve information on what to buy. I want to buy a new computer, I want to buy a new phone. Do you just read the reviews and then decide or you start collecting a few notes? This phone could be my choice because of this reason or collect a link to a review. I don't know, it, it doesn't matter again if you don't use software for one or more of these points, but if you do, tell me something about it now and tell me more later on in the assignment. So I'll give you until 11. So you have eight or nine minutes from now. As I said, it doesn't matter. Whatever you, you can think of or put down now, and then you'll be able to expand it later. But for now, this about 10 minutes should suffice to start the discussion. And then I want to hear some examples or just the names of some of the apps you use. Okay, any questions? Is that clear enough? Okay. So start working on this. And remember, before the end of the class, email me your initial notes to my address, Stony Brook address.